Welcome, everybody. It is the Callus Invitational 6 Grand Finals. Thrilled to be here after another successful year. The biggest Callus Invitational as far as donation support that we have ever had. And what a final we have here. Two opposite guys in every way. Soulwind, who has won so many tours, been in the finals of so many tours, accomplished all the things. Big Smogon guy, big tournament guy. Not an ADV main, an all-rounder. H-Clat, not a tournament guy. A ladder guy, has not been around forever. Has only been playing for four or five years now. Uh, is an ADV main and basically ADV exclusive. Not a big smoke on dude. Ladder guy, I mean, really, truly, very opposite guys and very opposite players as well. Soulwind, the diehard Stolly TSS player. h -clat. The aggressive, tempo-oriented guy. The Spikes offense guy. Really opposites here. Hell of a final. And I really, truly have no clue who has the edge here or what this matchup dynamic looks like. But I am absolutely thrilled to be here. And to remind you, these guys are playing for over $2,000 combined. Thanks to your generosity with your great donations. The winner is going to receive over $1,250, and the second place finisher will have to settle, air quotes, for over $750, almost $800 real dollars. So there is a considerable financial gap between first and second. Either one's going to have a good payday here, but you obviously want to win not just for the money, but the title and the custom avatar as well that goes to the winner. So we're going to get started. I just want to remind you that it is a best of five and that they are not in the same bracket. It is h -clat in the winner's bracket. He is undefeated in matches thus far in the tournament. He's actually only lost one game, so he is playing for history here. If he were to sweep Soulwind, he will not only be the champion, but he will have lost the fewest number of games en route to being the champion in Callus Invitational history. That record stands at two games right now, set by ABR last year. Should h -Clat lose one game but still win the set 3-1, to one, he will tie that record. But if h -Clat wins the set in any way whatsoever, it's over and he is the champion. Whereas if Soulwind wins this set, it will simply force another best of five down the road between these players. And that set will determine the champ. So with all that out of the way, let us begin what could be the final set of Callus Invitational 6. It is Soulwind and it is h -Clat for the championship. Grand Finals starting now. Soulwind in the lower bracket is on the bottom. h -Clat currently in the upper bracket on the top side. But I mean, Skarm and Tar respectively... And the Tar is actually going to outspeed the Skarm and get him with a Taunt. So it's got to be a significantly speed-invested Tyranitar. Preventing immediate spikes is good, and he goes Toxic, hoping something like a Swampert or whatever bulky water would come in there. But it's actually Metagross instead, and Soulwind doubled back. So now it is Skarm on Skarm action. But h -Clat is going to show a second Pokemon with Taunt and once again prevent the spikes that Soulwind attempts to establish. Here comes Suicune. And naturally, h -Clat is going to spike up here, knowing that he has nothing to fear from the opposing Skarm. Spikes advantage to h -Clat as he switches to Blissey. It is a CM for the Suicune here, but Blissey should clearly deter the Coon from doing much of anything. Unless it is a Crow Coon here, it could still set up on Blissey even after it goes to sleep, but that does not appear to be the case. h -Clat going to go for T-Wave, and that's going to connect with Skarm, which is good. He can't taunt it to prevent spikes this time, but the Para certainly benefits him. But through that Para, Solwyn gets a spike down anyway, so now we've got one layer for both guys. Solwyn pulls it back, and he's going to be drill packed on the way in. Very good snipe there for h -Clat. Huge damage on what is clearly not the world's bulkiest Gengar or a YOLO Skarm from h -Clat. But that drill pack does 58% to Gar, which is a hefty chunk. Neither one comfortable. Dahl comes in, as does Bliss. Rapid Spin does happen successfully for Solwind. But in exchange, 48% Ice Beam there. Big chunk from the doll. 
threatening a boom here. It might be too early. Soulwind has been pretty conservative with his explosions. He does not pull a trigger unless he really, really needs to. He does not get impatient with it. He's been very good about that throughout the tour. H. Clatt going to Swampert, seemingly busting out a generic Big 5 TSS in the opening game of the Grand Finals. Solwyn with a boom spam offense, it appears. Fire punch, and that's going to prompt him back to scout for a grass move. And good thing he did. That is hidden power grass. Obviously would have been devastating to the pert. Almost certainly killed it. But Blissey's going to take it just fine. And once again, we are threatening a nurse moment. But h Clat does not allow it as he goes to tar. And Solwyn undeterred is going to click HP grass again. 43% to T-Tar on the way in in doing so. Here's the meta switch back. And h Clat with another good prediction. Clicking Flamethrower this time. Doing good damage to the Metagross. So a couple good turns in a row that h Clat gets right. Now he's going to protect, which was unrevealed before. And that is the full set revealed. Taunt Toxic Flamethrower Protect is a weird set. That was hoping that the meta would blow there for Solwyn. But that is not what occurred. And he's going to mash again. Connecting with Skarm on the way in here. We know it's not Choice Banded. We see that he's gaining lefties. Spike Slayer number one reestablished, and there's a mash yet again, this time with an attack raise, which very well could matter here. See how h Clout wants to respond? It actually is a YOLO Skarm. He goes for HP Ground, so Drill Peck, Spikes, Taunt, HP Ground Skarm. Interesting for h Clout. Have not seen much of that at all this tournament. Ooh, and there's a big critical hit to snipe out the Metagross, which always would have survived the HP ground if not for the crit. And it would it would have killed the Skarm as well with the uh, Meteor Mash after the attack raise. So that crit is absolutely relevant, and h Clat going to be the beneficiary. He's going to get the first knockout of the match and take a small advantage over Soulwind. Gengar again with an opportunity for a Nurse Moment. And we are going to get it. I'm going to spare you the sound effect because it is the grand finals. But for purposes of the prediction survey, that was in fact a nurse moment as Gengar blows in the nurse's face and takes Bliss down with it. Rapid Spin gets off for Claydol yet again. And there is a drill pack from Skarm. It hits pretty hard because it's got that very high attack investment given what set it is. And there's yet another boom, this time taking the Swampert down with it. Solwyn trading one for one has got to be fine with h Clout, with h Clout flat out, uh, flat out being up a Pokemon. Does have to worry about the Coon now with the Bliss gone. Toxic, sure, but all that does is force a rest, which not a big deal, especially if it's Crow Coon. But with the Skarm, it could easily be Roar Coon instead. Plus one Coon on its own seems difficult for h Clad given the current circumstances. And that Protect is not without risk. It could allow a free CM or a free rest. And indeed, it does get a rest for Soulwind. Question now is, does he have Sleep Talk? And h Clad goes to meta immediately, threatening to blow up and remove this. Which is probably, given the team, given what's left, probably his only way to remove this. Soulwind does not play around Boom. And he does have Sleep Talk. Tricky, tricky. He didn't show it last turn. But h Clat does not go for the boom either. He just goes for the Monster Mash. He did the mash. Wakes up. Surfs him for a ton. Boom now or never. Ooh, agility. Interesting. So it's a mind game turn again. Does Solwyn play around what is an obvious boom on this turn? He does. He goes to Skarm. And it is the explosion with a crit. So Skarm is going to go down. I don't believe it would have otherwise. That crit again is relevant and benefits h Clat, And it leaves us in a 3-2 to two situation with an unrevealed for both. But even though Soulwind is down a poke, I don't know that h Clat can beat this Coon given what he's got left. This set of T-Tar sure as hell doesn't and neither does YOLO Skarm. So what is the last Mon for Clat? Here comes Salamence, a DD Mence here would be the best set and has a chance to get there, but even a Mixed Mence could get the job done. Back to Regice as the last poke for Soulwind. I don't know that h Clout was necessarily anticipating that, 
So this is going to come down to whether or not this incoming rock slide can crit or flinch. If it does not, Solwyn will take the game. But if he does crit or flinch, it's going to be H-Clat taking game one. But neither the crit nor the flinch come. And with that, it's going to be a game one victory for Solwind, which is going to make it so H-Clat will not and cannot break the record set by ABR last year. But he can if he now sweeps Solwind after this game, tie the record, which is a wonderful thing. But like I said, Solwind, who you guys in the predictions believe to be the underdog in this series, has in fact taken Game 1. Nothing h Clad can do about the Coon here. Game 1 on the board for the Spaniard, Solwind. And h Clad is now going to have to... I mean, it's just one game in a best of five, but h Clad is going to have to take three of the next four in order to win the tournament here and not let Solwind force a bracket reset and a whole nother best of five. Let's move along to Game 2. I'm going to go ahead when we begin and switch the sides for continuity. So let's put Solwind on the bottom again and each clat on the top again. And it's going to be Solwind with a Metacham lead, which is really weird for him. That's just totally opposite of the way that he usually likes to play. But the Metacham is going to scare away the lead T-Tar for each clat. Immediate brick break. Ooh, he's got Focus Punch. Imagine if he had gone for that on the first turn. It would have rocked Fory. But h Clat does not spike up. He resists the temptation there. And good thing that he did. Focus Punch there would have been real bad. He does get him with an HP bug and stop the Focus Punch in its tracks. There's Brick Break again. And Hidden Power again. So if Solwind has a Magneton or a Dugtrio follow up here, he's actually going to kill the Fury without ever letting it get a spike down. But he doesn't seem to have either of those things. He's got a Zapdos, which, to be fair, will deter the... The 4E from staying in here, so it does prevent the spike for now, but it's not the same as actually killing the 4E. So h Clad is going to respond with Celebi on what is an obvious Thunderbolt turn. Going to CM up, and substitute for Soulwind. This is reminding me of one of the teams from my team dump. It actually might be the team from my team dump for Soulwind. Need to see a little more, but it's looking real familiar at this moment. He BPs to meta, but the sub is no longer there. It got popped by the neutral hidden power, so HP fire. And it's weird that h Clat or that Soulwind, rather, is switching the meta into something that has HP fire. But I guess he... I guess he wants to threaten to blow up on it, and he thinks that h Clat won't stay. He's going to blow up on this... No, he's gonna miss Rock Slide. Uh oh. This Zapdos, if it is my team, this Zapdos is gonna be a real bitch after that Rock Slide miss. I don't know if the Rock Slide would have killed or not. He did have the opportunity to boom there, but BP Chain is probably not good for this team, which I do think is my team from the dump. If it is my team, there's gonna be a Starmie and a P2 in the back, and this is not gonna be. The ideal matchup by any means for Soulwind. h Clat still has that chain going. And he's going to sub up at this point. Representing what I would assume is an Endeavor Pert. Does have that Calm Mind boost. Ooh, he's actually lefties. So I guess he's not sub Salic. Is he sub punch lefties on Swampert? Interesting set. Surf there does not even break the sub because of the Calm Mind defensive boost. So maybe Starmie can stall him out here. Certainly should recover here. If it is sub punch, surf, and then I'm not sure the last move, but EQ, Ice Beam. Certainly if it's Ice Beam. So if it's sub, surf, Ice Beam, focus punch, it could do absolute dick all to the Starmie who resists all three of those moves as it happens. And there's a good prediction for h Clad Giga Draining there, catching the tower. It might have just been trying to Giga Drain the Starmie, but works out just as well hitting T-Tar here. And h Clad again is not going to chance it. Immediately BP's out of the way just in case HP Bug comes down. Instead, it is Dragon Dance. But if it is my team, which I'm almost certain that it is, I know it doesn't have HP Grass, unfortunately, for Solwyn. So out of the way, he's going to go. And Starmie going to take the Surf. 
But yeah, if it is my team and if it is P2 in the back, this is not going to be... This is not looking good for Solwind. I think HCLAT virtually has this locked if, in fact, that's the team that it is. Fortress reappears here, but still gets out of the way, giving Starmie the respect. Goes for the surf, and that's going to bounce off Celebi here. Celebi seems like a real bitch. This particular set seems real tough for what Soulwind has brought this game. I applaud him switching it up and bringing something very unlike what he usually brings. And I also appreciate him bringing my team. That's cool. I love, I love being able to say that in the Grand Finals. But I don't think it's going to work out. Missing that rock slide really hurt. I don't know if it would have killed or not. But it's just been all downhill from there. And h Clout looking good to tie us up at 1-1. Goes Thunderbolt rather than Thunder Wave, which is interesting. He did have a chance to get Para there. Or no, it's not Thunder Wave. My bad. I'm, all the teams are blurring together. It's um, it's BP Sub T-Bolt HP Grass. There is no Thunder Wave. Fair enough. Thunderbolt. And Rock Slides. Zapdos goes down, but too little too late, I think. h Clout almost certainly going to tie us up at 1-a pop. This Celebi is just not something that Solwyn can deal with with what he's got left. Here comes Last Poke P2, which did not find himself the Dugtrio or Salamence kind of matchup that he's best in. Going through the motions here, and certainly you shouldn't concede prematurely in Grand Finals, but I don't see the way out for Solwyn. I see this sooner rather than later being a 1-1 series. Maybe with full para here or some crits or what have you, maybe P2 can get there. Ice Beam for 30% isn't bad. And there's a para. There's hope. How about a crit Ice Beam here for Soul Wind? 28%. And another para. All right. So with a third para in a row or a critical hit, Soul Wind can BS out the Celebi here. Ice Beam here again. And finally, h Clack gets to actually do something. And he BPs the boost to Last Poke Jirachi in the back. Oh, Sub Rachi is super duper GG for Soul Wind here. Thunderway blocked by the sub. And I don't think it would be a premature concession anymore. I think h Clack has that in the bag. And Soul Wind agrees. He's going to concede. And it's going to be a 1-1 series. My team did not look good in this game. And 1-1 it is. So we will have at least four games in this set one way or another. We have seen grand finals on both ends of the extreme. We have seen 3-0 grand finals just last year. ABR swept Markov and that was that. And we have also seen two different grand finals go to all 10 games. So who knows what we're going to get. Very excited to see the series continue. We are 1-1, so this next game, no matter what, cannot be the last game of the tournament. But obviously, you want to be up 2-1 rather than down 1-2. Here is the third game. Solwind and h Clat staying in the positions they were in before. Solwind on the bottom and h Clat on the top. We have a T-Tar lead and a Zapdos lead, the two most common leads in the gen. And this matchup, of course, favors the Tyranitar. Though sometimes, if there is a Dugtrio in the back, and I would note that Dugtrio is not a mon that h Clad is particularly fond of, but sometimes when there's Dugtrio in the back, Zapdos will stay in in that matchup, Thunderbolt him, and then trade with him after the fact via the Dugtrio. But that does not appear to be the case here. h Clad has some kind of Zap Loom, so he can go to Spore for free, which he does right here, which is really, really good. Spore is a busted move. And the Mon that's going to take the nap is going to be Swampert for Soulwind. And the focus punches begin. Also of note, Soulwind missed a turn one rock slide. So poor luck for him from the outset. Focus punch again. And it's going to be immense coming in for Soul Win this time. Can't let the Swampert just die to the Breloom. Don't see how that gets you anywhere. Mence is going to take the Focus Punch after the Intimidate for about 30%. Breloom out of the way. Brick Break, huh? 
If it's mixed mance, I'm surprised he didn't dragon claw. I'm not sure what Brick Brick was anticipating. Even if it's mixed mance, maybe you flamethrower, but I think dragon claw is the safest play. Was he trying to catch the tower, perhaps? Interesting. I'm not sure about the Brick Break, but either way, he shows that, and it does very little to Zap, who immediately BPs out of the way, and we are back to Breloom here. Ooh, but he gets sniped immediately by T-Wave from Soul Wind, which, I mean, it doesn't kill the Breloom, but it really, really, really makes it worse. Here comes Mance for yet another Intimidate, but h Clat not going to stick around. He goes to T-Tar here. Here comes Meta, and this actually might also be my team for Solwyn. This might also be for my dump if it is Last Poke Starmie, specifically Bulky T-Wave Starmie, then it'll yet again be one of my squads, which went so well for him in the last game. Meta's going to miss Mash here. Uh, I wouldn't have done too much to Zap, but if it's non-Rest Zap, which I would assume that it is on this kind of team... All damage adds up, so unlucky miss for Soulwind yet again. Blissey going to come into a T-Bolt. And BP is coming to Loom. And there's an S-Toss, so that puts Loom in range where it would die to an Ice Beam. And h Clot has played in such a way where he represents that he doesn't have a Dug Trio. That doesn't mean that he doesn't, but he certainly has played like he doesn't. So I'd be a little bit surprised if h Clot got the Revenge Kill here with a Dug. I don't think he has one, but if so... That would be bad for Soulwind. But no, this is h Clat's double fighter team that he busted out and won with earlier in the tournament. I think this is a good squad into Soulwind, who typically is pretty TSS heavy. I think double fighter is good against this opponent. Uh, as it turns out, Soulwind is not running his own team. He's running one of mine. But nevertheless, I think this is a good bring. And there is Megahorn, which is going to do a fuck ton 70 percent at plus one there devastating the metagross and mens comes in for the intimidate to get it back to neutral attack and h clat is not able to predict that and go for rock slide he went for brick brick rather than megahorn there because he really doesn't want to miss against the meta and get blown up on but now h clat is going to get unlucky with accuracy missing rock slide that probably would have killed the salamence there and there is a wish coming down so Relevant misses both ways in this one. And there's the outplay from Soulwind. He would have died to Megahorn there, but he sneaks in the meta on the rock slide for just 9%, and he receives that wish. And all of a sudden, meta, who was very low between the wish and the lefties, gets all the way up to 81%. However, it is a mixed meta, and Psychic is 4x resisted by his counterpart. So h Clap retakes the tempo, and it is, in fact, my team. There is the Starmie in the back. Like I said, this is a bulky Recover T-Wave set. And T-Wave is probably coming down right here. Here comes T-Tar. And here comes T-Wave. That is a paralyzed Tyranitar for h Clat, who has shown Ice Beam. So it might be a Pursuit Tar here. So it's a little awkward for Solwyn. He stays in but could die to a crunch. But it is an over-prediction for h Clat as he goes for Pursuit. Had he clicked Crunch there, the Starmie would be dead. But Solwyn outplays him on this crucial Mind Games turn. But Solwyn not able to pull the trigger on the Recover. He doesn't want h Clat to stay in and Crunch. So he surfs him and Zapdos sneaks in for h Clat, Prompting out the Bliss. Thunderbolt comes down. I think he's safe. I mean, you can't stop him from BPing Nahara, but we know there's no Doug, so you can soft boil here. And it's going to be meta coming in, actually. And it's T-Wave, just in case, which I think is a good play for Solwyn. Whether that hits the Hera or the meta, it's good. Going to recover. By recover, I, of course, mean soft boiled. While wow, Mash is going to hit end attack raise through the para. Real bad for Solwyn. And he's not even going to chance it anymore. You can soft boil there, but it comes with a lot of risk. He's going to fodder off his sleeping Swampert, who takes 37% through the power from a plus one EQ. He doesn't wake, but Meta also doesn't attack through power, so he's going to get another chance to wake up, which he does. Ooh, but he goes for Protect rather than Earthquake here. And h Clat goes for the EQ, so that's going to leave Swampert at 31%. 
And now he's going to EQ, 57%, hoping for a crit or a para, but he gets neither one. And H-Clat takes out the Swamper to even us up at five mons a pop. Unrevealed in the back for H-Clat, but Soulwind very well may know what it is. Because like I said, this is a recycled team from H-Clad. He used it earlier in the tour. So if he scouted him, he may know what he's up against here. Flamethrower there aimed at meta is going to find T-Tar instead. But that's fine. He's paralyzed and he's got Brick Break. And he's going to Wish here, which is a nice outplay for Soul Wind. Rather than Brick Breaking into the Doll, which hadn't been revealed, or the Zapdos, he's going to go for Wish. And now H-Clad is going to click Earthquake. So some mind games happening for both players, but the past two turns, Soulwind gets the better end of it. Rockslide, however, is going to catch Soulwind off guard. And a flinch. Good turn for H-Clat. That's going to let Claydol lefties up and out of HP grass range. T-Tar comes in thinking it'll be Rockslide again. But h Clad clicks Earthquake for the second time into the Mence. What a play. And he snipes the T-Tar for 53%. And the T-Tar doesn't have lefties. He goes for the EQ and finally gets a little bit of a, of a tempo cooler as it blanks and as Intimidate happens. But he still does have Rock Slide. And now T-Tar sneaks in again for Soul Wind. But I don't know if he's comfortable staying in against Zapdos here. It's BP, and Solwyn did stay in. And it's going to be Rock Slide, and that's going to be wide and left yet again. A lot of misses in this game for both players. Now Salamence comes down for Intimidate. Wow, and a great prediction for h Clap, but yet another miss as another Rock Slide blanks. Been multiple Rock Slide misses throughout this series. However, Awkwardly, Claydol is faster than Salamence, which is real weird. That is a very fast doll. It's got to be a damn near max speed doll to be faster than the Salamence. That's crazy. But there is Flamethrower, and he's going to eat his own wish up to 82%, 88 after lefties. Back he goes to Bliss, who's a little bit low here. Thunderbolt 15% is still not danger to the Bliss. Even a crit wouldn't kill. But if you softboiled here, you're risking the meta or the Hera coming in. And it's going to be meta. Obligatory softboiled comes down. But who's going to eat what could be a boom here from h -clat? She stays in. What a call for Solwyn. Willing to get it blown up on. And it's unclear if h Clat went for it that turn or not. We'll never know. Full power comes down. Now it's meta thinking for sure h Clat will boom. And that turns out to be the right call. Boom does not kill the other meta, but it leaves it very low, of course. 11% as Heracross is the follow-up for h Clat in what is a 5-4 very close game favoring Soulwind, at least on paper, at this moment. Salamence comes in on a Brick Break, which, what he's looking for. h Clat going SD there or Rock Slide would have been really bad for Soulwind. Now Dahl sneaks in. And it is Wish for Soulwind, which I think is a good play. He could probably pass that to something here. And he's going to try to pass it to T-Tar. And h Clat does allow that. He's not able to make the Earthquake prediction. Rock Slide not good enough, and Solwyn gets his tire back up to 82%. But now Mens reappears for another Intimidate. And Earthquake there blanks, so Solwyn outplaying h Clat on the last couple turns. Now we're back to Bliss. A lot of switching for Solwyn. Rock Slide there, especially after Intimidate, is underwhelming at 11%. But the threat of Boom is very much there. T-Tar coming in for Clat. And softboiled for Soulwind, just in case. Not sure what he was playing around there. Earthquake? I don't know. I guess he's just being very safe. Well, Soulwind doesn't feel threatened here. He knows it's a special tar. Highly unlikely that it has something like Brick Break or Focus Punch as the last move. It's probably just a fire attack. So Blissey content to stay in. And all the T-Tar can do is crunch. Now granted, does get a Specs drop here, but... 
as a whole, Blissey totally comfortable in this one-on-one -on -one matchup, even with the specs drop. There's Estos and Crunch, respectively. Sure. Blissey might even soft-boiled here. I think you're supposed to just Estos, but Blissey clearly winning the 1v1 right now. What an amazing play it would have been on that turn to click T-Wave. A really hard play to make. Uh, he doesn't do that, but it would have been a blowout. Ooh, but it's interesting. He's willing to take a Brick Break in exchange for the T-Wave here. And I think that actually might end up winning Soul Win the game. I think that was a really important T-Wave, despite the risk associated with it. So I really like that play from Soul Win. I think that was a very heads-up play. And I think it's going to make it much, much harder for h Clat to win now. I like Soul Win's position as of now, but it's still a very close game. Wish coming down. And this time, Rock Slide is going to connect, which won't kill on its own, but with the sand, it will be enough. So it's going to leave us in a 4-4 to -4 situation with a Wish floating, and it's going to be the meta that he tries to give it to. Psychic there is aimed at the Hera and is going to blank on the T-Tar. However, as long as he doesn't miss Meteor Mash, it's not going to be a big deal. He eats the Wish and can threaten the kill. h Clat's going to let it go. Mash takes it out. And Solwyn regains the Mons lead. 4-3 to three now as Zapdos comes in to try to check the meta. But I don't know that Zapdos lives a Psychic plus the Sand here. I guess we're about to find out. Thunderbolt. And indeed it does not survive the Psychic plus the Sand here. Now Zapdos is down as well. 4-2 to two situation. Paralyzed Terra and Claydol only for h Clat. But the Claydol is actually a threat here. Given how fast it is, the Starmie needs to be faster here. Sometimes with T-Wave Star, it's only 270, but I believe I did the good thing and put it up to 284. And h Clat respects that possibility. Surf there is going to land on Hera, but he's got to keep that Starmie in the back to deal with the doll, so there's no way in hell he can stay in here. Or just kidding, or I guess he can. And full para kicks in, but had the Heracross killed the Starmie here, I think h Clat actually wins this game. But that is not the way that it worked out, and now I believe Solwyn has that, despite taking the risk there with the Starmie that I don't know that I would have taken. But that being said, I think h Clat needs an immediate crit here, or Solwyn is going to get it. There's the recover, and actually a crit wouldn't have even been enough. So I believe that Solwyn has this one and is going to be taking a 2-1 lead into the upcoming fourth game. Solwyn playing it pretty safe, but he's going to just start attacking at some point. Recover again. Is he trying to stall out EQs? Let's see. How feasible is that? He's only got eight of them. He could stall them out of EQ here. It's not actually too wild. Oh, just kidding. We're going to surf. One turn window there, actually, where h Clat with a crit and a good damage roll could kill the Starmie and then outspeed and kill the other two. So I actually think Soulwind did misplay this. I think he's actually supposed to stall out Earthquake there. So I think Soulwind did F this up and did take an unnecessary risk. I think he was supposed to stall out the EQs and then surf it down. Uh, but that nitpick aside, I think Soulwind as a whole played really well. And he's going to take this game, and he's going to take a 2-1 lead into the fourth game. Should he win the fourth game or a fifth game, he will reset the bracket, and they'll have to play another best of five. But should h Clat win this set, which would entail winning the next two games in a row, he is the champion, and the tournament is over. So this could be, this next game, the last game of the set, but it cannot be the last game of the tournament. Let's see how it plays out. Here's game four, Solwind with a 2-1 lead going into this game. And we'll switch sides for continuity, so Solwind is on the bottom and h Clat is on the top yet again. And they are both going to lead Tyranitar. Back to meta for Solwind, and back to Skarm for h Clat. Favorable matchup for Clat. But he doubles back to Zap just in case, worried about something like a Magneton in the back for Solwind. Good scouting for h Clat. He does not find a Magneton. He finds a Starmie. And Solwyn now doubles back. And man, there has been a lot of missing in this set. It is going to be a toxic missing 
on the T-Tire. Swampert comes in. And there's a Rock Slide. Obviously non-choice banded based on that damage. Back to Skarm. So both players have a Skarmory. And we end up with Skarm on Skarm, in fact. H. Clat once again, is busting out the Taunt Skarm, which served him pretty well earlier in the series. However, uh, Solwind is happy to oblige. Thief, even though the damage is awful, is in fact an attack. And he's going to steal the lefties from the opposing Skarm. Starmie comes in immediately as spikes come down. And there's Rapid Spin. And again, even though that damage is pathetic, it is in fact an attack. And it all adds up against a Mon that does not have leftovers. Solwyn's got a Dougie in the back. Gets roared out. But Solwyn, just as he did in a previous series, I'm having deja vu here where he went to Fori religiously against the Skarm. Same thing here. Every single time, immediately to Starmie. Does not let a single layer of spikes get up. He's just going to rapid spin it every single time until h Clat shows a ghost or some way to stop it. Here comes Bliss. And man, another Toxic miss. Not as big of a deal on the Bliss as it would have been on the Tower, but... A lot of Rock Slide misses and a lot of Toxic misses, it seems, in this set so far. There is an S-Toss on T-Tower for h Clat, which does have lefties, we're going to see. So that is also not banded. Here comes a Focus Punch. Wow. Sniped out by Soulwind. You're not Focus Punching me. Get tossed. And T-Tower is going to lose his Focus. There is a Dougie in the back, so if Titar kills something, Doug Trio will revenge kill him. Starmie comes in and will resist this Focus Punch. Takes it reasonably well. 32% with the resistance. Should be able to scare Titar out here with the threat of a water attack. But he's actually going to Focus Punch again. Interesting for h -Clat. Trying to Focus Punch him on a Recover turn, I, I, I guess. But he gets called out by the Surf. I don't know that I love the Focus Punch there. Is that really the best attack that he had against the Starmie in that situation? He must have thought there was going to be a double switch there. But as we see, there was not. So, Surf again trying to kill the T-Tar is going to connect on Zapdos instead. And T-Tar is going to sneak in again for Clat and get some lefties. He's trying to nurse that up slowly but surely. Focus Punch yet again. And this time it will connect. It's going to be Meta this time, who takes it for about a third. And Meta is faster than Tar here, says the lefties. That's going to prompt him out. And there is the mash. 18%. He did the mash. He did the monster mash. Here comes Starmie, which, you know, surprises nobody every single time. The Skarmory comes in. The Starmie comes in immediately with it. And there is a Spin Blocker in the back. All right. Rapid Spin is blocked. h Clout was pretty patient with that. But he blocks the Spin and has an opportunity now to maybe milk that one spike that he's got down. He doubles back to Zapdos just in case. And Zapdos is going to find itself paralyzed as Starmie clicks T-Wave here. Solon has brought T-Wave Starmie three times throughout this set. I don't know if it's just a coincidence or if that's a Mon that he really likes or if it's a Mon that he really likes specifically against h Clat, But interesting to note, this is the third time out of four that he's opted for a T-Wave star. Granted, two of them were my teams, but like he could have picked any team. He didn't have to pick my teams, so maybe there's something to it. Maybe he really likes T-Wave star against h Clat. Back goes the T-Tar. And there is the Skarm, and more missing from fairly accurate moves as Meteor Mash goes wide. And he misses a Mash again! Man! There is Roar dragging out the Blissey, okay? Uh, Blissey has shown us only Estos, so we don't know if she has something like Thunder Wave or Thunder Bolt or whatever here that the Skarm would not appreciate. And we're not going to see anything new, just another Estos. Which h Clat did taunt out. Starmie coming down in case there is another spike. Which there is. And we know there's a Gengar on the other side. Which does not want to get T-waved here of course. 
Goes for the Surf just in case Gar comes in, but it did not. And there is the Roar, which is going to again prompt out Bliss. Starmie getting low, so got to be careful here. H-Clat, if he manages to kill the Starmie, could milk those spikes to victory. And Estos is going to do a lot to Tar, but he's going to lefty out of range of another Estos. So Tar is safe here. And he clicks Focus Punch yet again. That seems to be h Clat's favorite, favorite move with Tar. And this time it's going to connect with a new target. He hit Starmie before, he hit Meta before, and now he's going to hit Skarm. 40%. Protect. And he switches it up. It's not Focus Punch. It's Rock Slide, which again would have missed. A lot of missing in this best of five. Focus Punch yet again. And one layer of spikes now finally for Soul Wind. But it's going to do even more damage than last time. 41 this time. Focus Punch yet again. And Protect for Soul Wind, which is going to get him out of Focus Punch range, seemingly, based on what it's done before. It could die, I suppose, with a max roll. Here's Meta. Does he Focus Punch again? He's going to actually just Rock Slide this time, which is the wrong choice. Focus Punch would have done more. But Meta should scare out h Clad here, since we know he's faster than Tar. And here comes Swampert. And it's Mash, 15% with no raise. Meta, of course, faster here, threatening Boom potentially, or HP Grass, I suppose, but more so Boom. It is a Protect Meta, actually, and the Protect is going to be ill-timed as the Zapdos sneaks in for free. He's going to Protect again. Why not? Already in. Might as well get some lefties. And it's going to be just a Thunderbolt on the Protect turn. Not a big deal. Solon probably switches out at this point. Can't really do a lot to the Zap. h Clat goes back just in case, and it actually is just Meteor Mash, so fair enough. Meta continues to lefty up. He's at two-thirds or so at the moment. And he's going to go straight for EQ, 22%, only to be met with a torrent range surf in retaliation. 47%. Obviously, Meta's not going to live another one of those. Back to Starmie at this point, thinking it'll be a protector surf. And it is a surf, which it's going to do a lot. It's going to put Starmie into the red. But he's going to survive, and he should be able to get a recover off. And there doesn't seem to be a lot that h Clad can do about that. Here comes Gar, and it is Recover, but this is going to make it so if he goes for Rapid Spin, it'll get blanked. And if he stays in and gets cute and goes for Thunder Wave, he risks just dying to Thunderbolt, but he's going to go for it anyway. He gets Thunder Wave, and h Clat over predicts with Will-O-Wisp. He can't pull the trigger on the Thunderbolt there to kill the Starmie. h Clat has got to be kicking himself there. He had it right in front of him. He could have killed the Rapid Spinner. But he doesn't go for it. And now full para kicks in. Got to be very frustrating for h Clad, who's had two opportunities to kill the Starmie and hasn't been able to do it. He Will-O-Wisps again now, but who cares? Blissey sure doesn't. Blissey's going to soft boil. And there's nothing h Clad could do about it unless he wants to blow, which even then, that's probably fine because that would free up the Rapid Spinner. Softboiled comes down and h Clad pulls it back. Soul Wind Definitely gets the better end of that exchange. The paralyzed Gar is going to be so much worse than it otherwise would be. h Clad has got to be kicking himself for that Will-O-Wisp instead of just Thunderbolting it and killing it. So that leaves us now with Soulwind, who is up two games to one at a 6-5 advantage here. I like his position in this game as well. And if he wins, we are going to reset the bracket and go to a whole new best of five. There are three layers of spikes down, though, so this game is far from over. And h Clat with the Rock Slide connecting with the Skarm. Solwyn gets a second layer for himself, but Rock Slide connects and down goes the Skarm, leaving us briefly in a 5-5, five to five, but you know that the Dug Trio is going to come down for the Revenge Kill. We haven't seen him in a while, but here he comes for cleanup, and Titar is out of here, giving Solwyn his lead back. 5-4 to four advantage now for Solwyn. And the last poke for Clat is Aerodactyl, which is very strong in this situation. Earthquake is the move, and Solwyn has no Pokemon that are immune to that. In fact, he has to go to a Pokemon that is weak to it in Tyranitar. 
H. Clatt not going to stick around. He knows how valuable the Aerodactyl is. Rock Slide coming, and the fodder is going to be the Zapdos. You're obviously not going to switch to the Paralyzed Gar here, so I guess it's going to be Swampert. And here it comes, 26% after Spikes. And it dies to the Earthquake, so Clatt might have no choice here but to go to the Aerodactyl and go for Rock Slide flinches. Instead, he's going to go to Gar and try to dodge Rock Slide here and chip the tire down. And Solwyn plays very conservatively and does not allow that. He fodders off his meta instead to the incoming Giga Drain plus the Spikes. And that's going to prompt out the Starmie, which is an unusual choice. Is he just going to click Surf here and then let the Blissey come in? Is that what we're going for? No, he's going to recover, actually. And full power at a bad time for h Clad. He easily could have Thunderbolted or Giga Drained there, but he doesn't get the opportunity to do either. Recover again for Soul Wind. And more full power for h Clat. The Gengar is quite unlucky here. And it's starting to slip for h Clat. Here comes Bliss. Wow, three full paras in a row for h Clat. Not a lot you can do about that. Non-interactive. Soul Wind is getting this late game. And he goes straight Ice Beam, which is interesting. If he soft boils there, he has a chance to just survive the attack and click T-Wave, but he sees it differently. He's going to let the Bliss go after Ice Beaming, so Aerodactyl is now locked on Rock Slide. That could be good enough. He's like a crit or a flinch away from winning anyway. Where there's an arrow, there's a way. Here's Rock Slide, 38, and a flinch, but he's going to need another. One more turn, crit or flinch for the win for h Clat. No crit. And no flinch either. Now, obviously, he could have dodged the rock slide as well, but that did not occur. So now it is only the paralyzed Gengar against the weakened Tar and the Starmie for Soul Wind. Rock slide connects when it needs to, and there is the kill. And with that, Soul Wind has defeated H. Clat three games to one, and he will reset the bracket. They will play a whole new best of five. Probably at a later date, I would hope. And the winner of that best of five will be the Callus Invitational Six champion. But for now, it is three to one. Soul Wind over H. Clat in set one of the grand finals. Set two coming up soon. I appreciate you guys watching. The final set of Callus Invitational Six is coming up. Please join me for that. In the meantime, please do click the like button if you enjoyed the video and have enjoyed the tournament. I will see you guys in the next video.